Hey, what's up? It's Frank here from datadriven.tv, the podcast where we focus on the emerging fields of machine learning, data science, and artificial intelligence. I'm here today on my way back from a trip to the Microsoft Technology Center in Ruston, uh, where I was able to deliver a uh, speech uh, presentation and demonstration to a number of students from around the world, uh, high school students uh, who have come to Georgetown University to uh, attend a uh, summer camp of sorts on uh, the basics of coding and data science. And I think this dovetails nicely into the recording I made last week, where, um, you know, in front of a, a coding camp uh, out in suburban Maryland. And, you know, I think it's great. I think I think it's awesome that Georgetown is doing this with high school kids. They're opening it for kids around the world. But also that they're not just focusing on coding. Because I think coding is always going to be a good career path. But, you know... These kids are in high school, and, and to put things in perspective, when I was their age, when I was their age, uh, I mean, it was, um, let's see, I think they were like juniors and seniors in high school. So we're looking at like, you know, the early 90s. So think how much things have changed in the world, in our professional careers, in processing power, and what's feasible, and entertainment. I mean, you know, mobile phones, you know, at the time, they were around, but they were... They weren't like big bricks that were five pounds, but they were they were hefty kind of uh, handsets, that's for sure. Um, and the, the notion of having apps on them was just alien to anyone. I think think anyone would believe it. It wasn't until um, ninety four ish is when the Apple Newton came out, and I think Panasonic had something called Magic, or was that Sony? But the point is, is that you know one of them, uh, a couple of them came back to, to ask me to thank them. Yeah, I mean they thanked me for for the presentation, which I'm glad that was entertaining for them. Um, but, um, you know, that they asked some of them asked advice, you know, what should I study? And I said, I mean, you can't go wrong. It's, I can't say study Java, right? Because who knows if Java is going to be around in five years, honestly. Uh, I get a lot of, uh, hate from some Java developers when I say stuff like that, but who would have thought when JavaScript came out that it would be the dominant web programming language? I wouldn't have guessed it because JavaScript in a lot of ways is a god awful language. And, and don't hate me if you're a big JavaScript fan. If you're a big JavaScript fan, you know the language has warts. And sometimes that's what makes it lovable. I love and hate JavaScript with equal fervor. Uh, but I, I, I just said, you know, I said two things. You know, one, pick something that you like to do that's hard to do. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, mathematics, electrical engineering... Most people are not are going to be intimidated uh, by those subjects. You can't go wrong with math. You can't go wrong with electrical engineering. In fact, I actually, um, I actually said, you know, it's like you know, I kind of wish I had taken electrical engineering because you know uh, I'd be able to work on the electric stuff in my house, you know, because I'd have a better understanding of electricity. But um, uh, as well as you know, uh, you know, getting you know to be able to do computer science too. In fact, actually. Historically, I don't know if it's still true that the um, the best paid people in, in Silicon Valley, et cetera, were electrical double E's, uh, electrical engineers. Um, you know, but um, but I mean the point is is that if you can do things that other people can't do, you are at a competitive advantage uh, because you're rare, right? And it has to be things that people want to do. I mean, our society is run by technology. A hundred years ago, it was run by effectively oil. Now, oil is still important. Uh, don't need to remind people of that. But, I mean, the idea is that you know, data is kind of becoming the thing. And I love the fact that they called it coding and data science. Uh, because the line between the two, there is a line. It's a little bit fuzzier than I think most people would admit. But the idea that they get their heads thinking about data and how to code against data, right? The time when you could create a, a, a website and be a millionaire, yeah, I wouldn't say it's gone, but it's not the nineteen, it's not nineteen ninety six anymore, right? With an app, right? You know, achieve fame and and wealth through just an app. It's not two thousand eight anymore. Um, you know, it's two thousand eighteen. Data is the new hotness, um, and I think that's really. Uh, I love the fact that they're focusing on that. 
And that, in fact, actually, the only thing that concerns me about these coding camps, now I realize there's a kids, is that they're focusing just on the coding, right? It's a good skill to have, to be sure. But how do you... I think it goes back to what that guy said. I'm blanking on his name right now, so I apologize, sir. Um, but it, it's really about how do people... You have to teach the fundamentals, right? It's all about analytical thought. I kind of the guy, the kid was uh, brilliant. Man. I was like, well, it's really good down analytical thought. Like, can you break down and kind of work through a problem? Um, anyone can do it, just nobody does. And I kind of give the example. You know, I could have a physique like The Rock. Most people could. Do I? No. I mean, for those of you watching this on video, you know that I don't. Um, although I am having great luck with keto. And perhaps Andy and I will do a show just on that. But, I mean, the point is, is that you have to do the things that are hard, right? Uh, and, and be good at those things because that's what people are not, en masse, are not going to be disciplined enough to do it. And something uh, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, author of Crush It and Crushing It, one of the things he says, he likes boring and dull. And that's like an odd thing for such a high energy guy. He says because boring and dull means no one's going to do it. And that, that puts him at a significant advantage because he's willing to do the boring and dull stuff. The context of it is, is, is something I don't want to blow out this data point for. But I just want to say, I think these kids, uh, granted the sample size was maybe biased because these are, these are really well-educated, uh, well-motivated uh, kids who are at this camp. But I think the future is in good hands. I think that they brought us some interesting questions. We had a great conversation. They loved my demo. That you know, As a presenter, that always makes me happy uh but it, you know um i think it was it was a great chance to kind of get a, a feel for what kids who grew up in this app driven society what are what are their shift and what are their paradigm shifts i hate using paradigm shift because it's such an over overused term um, but what are their thought processes when they they see that the world is not going to be just app driven but it's going to be data driven um which is an awesome name for a podcast, by the way, as well as an awesome name for a Facebook page. So if you're watching this, then you probably already know we stream these live, these data points live on Facebook. And if you are listening to this, then you should head on over to our Facebook page and like us so you'll be notified when I do go live because uh, sometimes you get some interesting bloopers uh, and sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're just, you know, odd connectivity issues like I had today. And with that, you have a great day.